Today our topic of our sermon this morning is we all come from the same stuff. We all come from the same stuff. Amen. Isaiah's, God, Isaiah's book of prophecy, chapter 64, verse 8. Yet you, Lord, are our father. We are the clay. You are the potter. We are the work of your hands. He knows our names. Father, in Jesus' name, we ask you to bless this word and bless each of us as we share around this word with these your people. Give us all receptive hearts and minds. We're looking to hear from you, God. So bless us and keep us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We thank God for this opportunity to stand before you on this Black History Sunday, last Sunday of Black History Month. And we've come to talk to you a little bit about we all come from the same stuff. In our country here in America, things are so divided right now, but we still all come from the same stuff. Amen. Amen. Don't Amen. care if you're from this side of the tracks or that side of the track. Doesn't matter where your daddy went to school or my daddy went to school. Don't matter if your daddy went to school or my daddy didn't go to school. We all come from the same stuff. Don't matter if you're six foot five and I'm a five foot something. Don't matter if you're 300 pounds and I'm 100 something. We all come from the same stuff. Doesn't matter if I'm light skin and you dark skin or, or you no skin or you white or you red or you yellow or you, 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 it doesn't matter. We all come from the same stuff. Amen. 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 We'll Amen. start right there. We all come from the same stuff. Now, we've been in this type of worship environment for the last, oh man, 11 plus months. And you know, normally there's a lot of folks sitting out there and, you know, in our African American churches, we like to say, you know, look at your neighbor. <laughs> your neighbor is like 15 rows over. <laughs> Look at your neighbor, Deacon Smiley. Amen. Say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. <laughs> we all come from the same stuff. Look to another neighbor. You at home? Say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. <laughs> we come from the same stuff. Tell somebody we all come from the same stuff. Amen. Say one more time. Say, neighbor. Oh, neighbor. <laughs> Don't forget. What you, come from. what you come from. We come from stuff. We come from mud. We come from dirt. God reached down into the dirt and he formed us. Amen. Amen. He didn't grab the, the, the light skin dirt for me and the dark skin dirt for you and, and the fat dirt for me and the skinny dirt for you. He grabbed some dirt and breathed in the dirt the breath of life and we became living, breathing beings. Amen. We come from the same stuff. Amen. You didn't come from dirt up on the hill, and I came from dirt down the bottom of the hill. We came from dirt. Amen. We got to rec recognize and realize that we come from the same stuff. You know my name? He, he knows all of our names. Uh -huh. Amen? He knows my name and your name, and my name may be Danny, yours may be Kunta, but he knows our name, and he walks with us, and he talks with us, and he tells that we are his own. We belong to God, amen. We asphyxiate on where we come from. We asphyxiate on what we look like. We asphyxiate on our educational background, and, and we asphyxiate on who our parents were. But God says you all come from the same stuff. We come from some dirt. We come from some mud. We all start somewhere, and we start the same place. I'm here to tell you that we all start with the same stuff. So as we come to this, this end of celebrating Black History Month, we should be mindful of what we come from. And we should be mindful of who made us and why he made us. He didn't make us so we could stick at our chest and say, I'm tall, dark, and handsome, and you short, fat, and ugly. <laughs> he didn't say because you're black and, or brown and I'm white or yellow or red. He said, no, you, you come from the same stuff. We're all the king's kids because we've confessed our mouth, believing the heart on Jesus Christ. We're here in the church. We're Christians, amen? amen. And we should better get along with anybody who is, who is also a Christian. The Jesus and me should love the Jesus and you, not the Jesus and me wants to beat the out of you. Right. Amen? Black History Month is a time to honor our African-American heritage, and it's a time to honor the contributions of, of our African-Americans all around the world, and especially here in the United States. But some people don't believe that we need Black History Month anymore. <laughs> I'm not here to argue that. But as long as we are misrepresented in history, then we ought to have black history. 
Until the day comes that when you say history and our name's written right there in the same books, then we should have black history. Amen. Amen. At minimum, I believe it is needed annually to remind us that not all the citizens of these United States from our origins to our current time have lived up to the professed vision of liberty and justice for all. Not everybody wants that for all. Amen. As Christians, it's, it's a chance during black history to celebrate the creative brilliance of our God and Father who, who made every one of us. Amen. He made everyone, every creature from every nation of humankind. We all come from the same stuff. In Acts chapter 17, verse 26, we find the, the writer puts these words down. It says, from one man, he made all nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed time in history and boundaries of their lands. From one man, Adam, God made you, me, and everybody else. We all started from the same stuff. That is our history. It's not black history. It's not white history. It's not European history, not Asian history. Amen. It's history. We all come from the same stuff. It is the redemptive beauty of Christ who with his own blood has ransomed people of God from every tribe and every language and people from every nation. That's what his blood has done. It's because Christ that we exist in our diversity and we can celebrate our adoption into the family of God. We are part of the family of God. No matter what your color is, you believe in Jesus Christ, you're part of his family. Amen. Revelations 5 and 9, we find these words, and they sang a new song, saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were slain, amen? And with your blood you purchased for God's person, for God's person from every tribe and language and people and nation. Thank you, Jesus. People are made from the same stuff. We got to get that into our mind. I remember we all come from the same stuff. No better, no worse than anybody else. Amen. We are unapologetically made in God's image. Get that in your mind. We are black by design. I'm, about you. I'm black by design. I'm not black by mistake. I'm not black by accident. I'm black by design. I, I was made in God's image. He reached down in the dirt and he created me. Thank you, God. He created you. We got to somehow get used to who we are. Amen. I'm a black man. I'm not ashamed of who I am. I, I'm here to tell you I've been short all my life, and I've been black even longer than that. Amen. 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 But God knows my name. Amen. Amen. And God walks with me, and God talks with me, and, and God tells me I'm his own. And I'm here to let you know that, that I'm a testify that I am one of the king's kids no matter what I look like, no matter where I come from, no matter who my daddy is, who my mama is, amen, no matter who my brothers and sisters are, I am one of the king's kids, amen. Thank you, Jesus. We, we all come from the same stuff, the same stuff, amen. We can't die it. I'm here to tell you it don't work. We can't scrub it off. We can't cover it up. We can't try to wash it off. We are who we are. We are God's people. We are part of world history. We are part of religious history. We're not just part of U.S. history, not just part of black history. We are part of history. Amen. We are, we are who we are. And there's nothing to be ashamed of who we are. God has done and God continues to do. He, he continues to do marvelous things. He does great things with black and brown people throughout all the generations, not just Caucasians, but all of his people have done some great things in the name of Jesus. We're all made in God's image according to God's word. And the song says, Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world, Teresa, red and yellow, black and white, they are special. In his sight, Jesus loves the little children of the world. You know he loved big children too? Red and yellow, black and white. He, he loves all of us. 
We got to get used to God loving all of us no matter where we come from, no matter who we are. If we're children of the king, then God loves us no matter what we are. Red and yellow and black and white human beings, God loves all of us and will use all and any of us for his will to be done. Amen. God does not discriminate when it comes to preaching and teaching the word of God. God does not discriminate when he wants someone to go out and tell someone about Jesus. He does not discriminate when he wants folks involved in the work of incarnational transformation. God wants you on the battlefield for the Lord. He don't care what you look like, what you talk like, what your language is, where you went to school. God wants you in his business. Amen. Telling folks about his darling son, the business of incarnational transformation, telling folks about Jesus. That's why he bent down the dirt to create you and me so that we might be his people, living by faith and not by sight. So family, until we, are, we in this country recognize the contribution of African Americans in our history, we must continue to celebrate black history, Amen. There will come a time, maybe, amen, maybe in my lifetime, maybe not, amen. But until history includes us, there must be black history. A time to honor contributions of African Americans to U.S. history. And Dr. Carter Woodson, the son of former slaves and one of the first scholars to study African American history, he planted the seed that grew into what was initially called Negro History Week back in February of 1926. It wasn't until 1976, some 50 years later, that it was changed to Black History Month. Dr. Woodson is known as the father of black history. During his graduate and doctoral studies, he noticed that, that the role of African Americans in American history was either misrepresented or it was missing altogether from our history books. Amen. Amen. I've noticed a little bit of that too in my studies. Amen. He chose the second week of February to, to coincide with the birth dates of Abraham Lincoln, which was February 12th, and, and Frederick Douglass, which was February the 20th. President Gerald Ford was the first American president to recognize Black History Month. In 1976, it was during the, the nation's bicentennial celebration. President Ford's original charter was, was a call for Americans to seize the opportunity to, to honor the, the, the too often neglected accomplishments of black Americans in every area of endeavor throughout our history. Today is a time to preserve and to present African Americans in history to our children and to others around this country and around this world. I thank God for Black History Month every year. I hear something I didn't know before, amen? Something I couldn't find no place else, but it came to my, to, my, to my mind. I got a chance to do some research on it, amen? Let me share a few names that we normally hear in Black History. I can't say all of them, but, but just a few, amen? It, it, it's not, doesn't include everybody. It, it's limited, amen? So, so Madam C.J. Walker, amen? She was the first U.S. woman, not African-American. She was the first woman in, in the United States to become a self-made millionaire. Amen. We look at Jack Johnson. He was the first African-American man to win the heavyweight, heavyweight boxing championship. Amen. And Dr. Charles Drew, he, he invented that, the large-scale blood, uh, blood, blood banks. Amen. And Rosa Parks, he's credited with, with sitting on the back of that bus and, and sparking the, the civil rights movement. These are some great folks in our heritage. Amen. And we think of Thorgood Marshall. He was the first African-American to be, be a Supreme Court justice. Amen. And then there's George Washington Carver who took a peanut and, and derived 300 some odd products from it. Amen. And we have Dr. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Amen. He was, he was, he was a star in, in the civil rights movement. He was just a star. They killed him for it. Amen. And we think about Mary Jackson. Mary Jackson. Uh, amen. She was a NASA's first African-American uh, woman engineer. Amen. They made a movie about her. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And think about John Johnson. He was the first African-American billionaire at the selling BET in 2001. And think of President Barack Obama, the first African-American to become the president of these United States. He's number 44. That means there was only 43 men in the, in the history of this country to be present before him. 44, he's number 44. Hallelujah. Don't you miss, I miss 44. I just like his walk. The brother be, okay, God bless you. 
He strolls off, amen. I like 44, amen, amen. And think about this, uh, Vice President Kamala Harris is the first woman of African or Asian descent to become the Vice President of these United States. We all come from the same stuff, but we ought to lift each other up every now and then and thank God for, for what he's done through some folks, amen. He's used them to, to help us to live a better life. Thank God for that, amen. Let's spend some time with three points concerning coming from the same stuff. The first point, what is the stuff we come from? Amen. Amen. I need a, Miss Nancy, you got me a napkin, please. I, I, I'm working too hard right now. Amen. 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 We, we, what is the stuff we come from? We must identify what is the stuff we come from. Isaiah, the first part of, of, of our script, it says, we are the clay. Isaiah 64 and 8b, we are the clay. We must recognize we are the clay, amen? We are the clay. Thank you, Ms. Nancy. Amen. We are the clay. You know, I normally have a, a handkerchief in my, my jacket pocket. <laughs> I ain't got a jacket on today. <laughs> it'd, be, it'd be folded nice, just pull it out. and go, <laughs> Brother Boy, you know what I'm talking about? I ain't, got, I ain't got no place. Amen. But, but again, it says we are, we are the clay. Amen. It's not where we come from. It's not who, who, who our parents are. <laughs> it, but it's what we come from. We come from the same stuff. God took time to reach down in the dirt and create us. That's what God did. He created us out of that stuff. We come from the same stuff. But what is that stuff? It, it says that we are clay. We are moist dirt. <laughs> We are dirt combined with water. That's what it is. We find in Gen Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 through 27 and verse 31, it says, Then God said, Let us make humankind, or mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the air, over the livestock and all the, the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created Mankind in his own image. Let me read that one more time. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female. He created them. God saw all that he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning on the sixth day. For five days, God created everything. He got the world ready for people. And then God, on the sixth day, he created, he created us. He created animals, and then he created us, and then he breathed enough the breath of life, amen. And on, on the first day, God said it was good. The second day, God said it was good. Third day was good. Fourth day was good. Fifth day was good. On the sixth day, when God created us, you know what he said? He said it was very good. It was very good. That's what God thought of you, and that's what God thought of me, and that's what God thinks of you, and that's what God thinks of me, amen. Hey, I'm here to tell you that, that, that we belong to God. We find in Genesis chapter 5, verse 1, B, the second part there said 5, 1, B, when God created mankind, he, he made them in the likeness of God. I'm not saying we look like God, amen, but he created us in his image. Likeness gives the idea of resemblance and outward similarity. This truth is foundational. God created human beings only human beings in his image. Gender, skin color, and other physical differences do not change this reality. We're all created in God's image. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, it says God sh first shapes clay, sculpting and forming humankind from the dirt of the earth. As God's hand kneaded this and smoothed the, the moist dirt, God breathes life into God's new creation. And the human being is then animated by the, the very breath of God, the spirit of God. Amen. Genesis 2, 7 says, Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. Thank you, God, for breathing your spirit into us. Amen. Similarly, God, he, he, he shaped every beast from the fields, it says, and every bird in the sky from the ground. But nowhere does it say in Scripture that God breathed into them the breath of life. Nowhere does it say that God breathed the Holy Spirit into the animals, 
Amen. It says he created them and he took them to Adam to see what he would name them. Amen. In Genesis chapter 2, verse 9, he says, Now the Lord had God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He, he brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was his name. God gave the, the human beings dominion over the animals, dominion over the birds, dominion over the sea creatures, dominion over the, the plants, everything. Because God created us to be special. Amen. If we want to believe we're the king's kids, we ought to walk around and act like we're the king's kids. Hallelujah. I'm one of the king's kids. We are clay. We are formed by God and breathed into by God. Amen. So what is the stuff we come from? We come from dirt. We come from clay. And God has breathed into us the breath of life. The second point, who formed us out of the stuff? <laughs> Isaiah, the, the third part of, of Isaiah 64, A, 8. See, I call that you are the potter. It says you are the potter. Yet you, Lord, are our father. First point, we are the clay. Second point, you are the potter. Do we recognize God as a potter? We find all throughout the Bible, many places we'll find the same analogy, same metaphor that God is a, is a potter. And we are clay. Recognize that we can't make ourselves. Recognize that when we get up on the potter wheels, without the hand of the potter on your life, you will spin off the potter's wheel into oblivion. But if we allow God to, to mold us, Jocelyn, amen, and to shape us, Stephanie, that God will create, create out of us what he wants us to be. But when we push back against God, we'll get marred in his hand, amen. We wobble around on the wheel. We only stay on the wheel because God has his hands on us. We thank God. Don't turn away from God and your life will wobble off in the corner. But stay in, in, in God's hands. Allow God's press to be alive and well in your life. And God will have a steady hand on you. Even, even when you've got some stuff that's going on, God will still be in a to eradicate that stuff from your life, remove some of the impurities and get you back on that wheel going in the right direction, amen. So again, you are the potter. We're talking to God, he is the potter. You can't tell the potter what you want to become. You and I are clay, we're dirt, amen. God is sovereign, can do whatever he wants to do with you and me because he's sovereign. The creation of the first man is seen as a very special occasion, family. There is a consultation prior to the event. It says, let us make man in our image. It sounds like the conclusion of a divine deliberation among the persons of the Godhead, amen. Let us make man in our own image, amen. God couldn't have been talking with the angels about his plans because angels weren't made in God's image. We are. And angels had nothing to do with creation of Adam. Amen. So all creation displays God's design. All creation dis displays God's power. And all creation displays God's goodness. But only human beings are said to be made in God's image. Amen. I've seen some, some unbelievable animals in this world. Nothing but God. But they are not made in God's image. Hey, man, I, I watched the, some of the, 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 the PBS shows. And I, I see animals and look at that elephant, but he wasn't made in God's image. I've seen the hummingbirds. They fly backwards and sideways. Their wings beat up, but they're not made in God's image. I've seen lions, king, king of the jungle, but, but they're not made in God's image. I and you, have we been made in God's image, amen? Made in God's image out of the same stuff, amen? Might have took more stuff for you than it took for me, but same stuff, Amen? Loretta, you understand what I'm saying? We made out of the same stuff, sister. I come from, from, from the bottom in Trevos, Pennsylvania. Where you from? It don't matter. God made you from the stuff. He made you from the stuff. He's got us here right now doing his work and doing his will. Amen. He's called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. To tell others about Jesus. So, again, who forms us out of stuff? God the Father forms us out of stuff. God made us. God formed us. He didn't need nor ask for any help. Amen. Isaiah 40 and 13. Isaiah writes these words. Who can fathom the spirit of the Lord or instruct the Lord as his counselor? 
I'm here to tell you, you and I were not in that, 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 that discussion. We were not in that consultation that God was having. Some scholars, they, they, many scholars have offered a variety of ideas about what was going on when he said, let us. Let us look at these three explanations. First one is, uh, it may be angels. Some believe it's angels. Amen. However, angels are depicted in scripture as servants, as messengers, not as creators or rulers. Amen. We can throw that one out. Amen. The second one, it could be what scholars call plural or self-exhortation, meaning God is referring to only to himself. You know, you know what we going to do today? Y'all would say that? Maybe God would say, what we going to do today? Amen. I mean, that sounds good. The third one is that God is speaking as the Trinity. Amen. <laughs> speaking to the Trinity. According to scripture, the full Trinity is present at creation. Amen. We find in Genesis 1, it says, in the beginning, God. <laughs> in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But it said that the spirit of God was hovering over the water. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. So God the Father was, was there. In the beginning, God, no matter what Bible you got, in the beginning, God. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the water, and the Lord said, let there be light, and there was light. And then we find in John's Gospel, chapter 1, about 1 through 3, it says, in the beginning was the Word, the Logos, and the Word was with God. The Word was God. He was with God in the beginning through him. All, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made. It has been made, so we know God the Father was there. In the beginning, God, we know God, the Spirit was there, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the water. And now we find in John 1, 1 through 3, that and, and, and nothing was made without Jesus Christ. So I believe that he was there talking to Jesus. He had a consultation. God was talking to God about you and me. Amen. There's a lot of folks that will get together and talk about you and me, but they're not talking good stuff. God and God and God got together to talk about you, Deacon Smiley. God, God, and God got together. Talk about you, Brother Bord. Amen. Amen. That, but David Bino, God, God, and God talked about you and that saxophone. Amen. Amen. God, God, and God said, you're going to beat them drums one day, brother, and they made you out of the dirt. Amen. God, God, and God came in consultation. Let us make man. Let us make human beings in our likeness. Thank you, God, for making me in your likeness. God is not a respected person. Amen. That's King James English. God is not a respectable person. NIV says he's, he doesn't show no favoritism. Amen. I, I tell you, God loves me more than he loves everybody else. That's my, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Just like my mama. My mother loves, she had 11 children. She loved me more. She loved all of them. <laughs> that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Till they come around. Amen. Then Thomas starts saying, well, you know, her name is Tommy, and my name is Thomas, so I'm her favorite. And Johnny said, you know, I'm the firstborn, you know, so I'm the favorite. And Tommy said, I'm the, I'm the baby girl, so I'm the favorite. What? No, I'm the favorite. When I'm around and nobody else around, I'm the favorite. With God, when I'm in my car by myself, in my, I'm the favorite. God, I'm your favorite. I'm your boy. But God doesn't show favoritism. He's not a respect of person. Amen. Not because I'm, I'm better looking than somebody else, because I'm, I'm got more money than somebody else, I'm taller, I, I'm darker, or whatever. God shows no favoritism. God's not a respected person. We look in Acts chapter 10. I read verse King James, first NIV and then King James. The NIV verse of, of Acts 10, 34, 35 is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him. And does what is right. God does not favor one person or group over, over another. He acknowledges the diversity of his creation while showing grace equally. Believers should follow this example. Come on. God don't show no favoritism. He, shows, he, he gives grace. He shows grace equally. Let's look at the King James Version there of Acts 10, 34, 35. It says, then Peter opened his mouth and said, oh, I I perceive that God is no respecter of person. But in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted with him. We thank God for his holy word. The sixth day, it wasn't just a good day. The sixth day of creation was a very good day because God made 
us. He reached down to the dirt and he made the first man and the first woman. And he breathed into Adam the breath of life. When God made me, think about this, when God made me, I'm here to tell you, he, he didn't break the mold, but he is the mold. We all, God used himself as the mold to make us. Amen. And for that fact alone, we ought to be able to stand up taller and, and straighter and say, I've been, I've been made in the mold of God, I, in his image. Amen. I, I got something in me that's like God because God said I made you in my image. Amen. I don't know what it is, but I know there's something about, about me that's, that's in the image of God. Might be my nose, might be my ears. I don't know what it is. Might, might be my, 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 you know, I don't know. But I am in the image of God, and so are you. Created out of the dirt, created out of the mud, and breathed into the spirit of the living God. Amen. God got together with God and talked to God about you and me. Psalm 100, verse 3 says, Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people. The sheep of his pastor. We are the king's kids. We are the sheep of his pastor. Jesus said he knows his sheep. He says, my sheep listen to my voice and I know them. He says, my father is greater than all. That's what he says. He says, my father has, he says, I got you in my hand. He said, my father has you in his hand. He said, and no one's greater than my father. He said, I and the father are one. He's got us in the palm of his hand. We all belong to God, not some of us. We can't question why we're black. We can't question why we're tall. We can't question why we're fat. We can't question why we're skinny. We can't question why we got big feet. We got little ears. We can't question why we're black. We can't question why we're yellow. We can't question why we're brown or, or red or all those things. Because we belong to God and God created us out of dirt. Amen. We find Isaiah's book. Isaiah 29 and 16, Isaiah writes these words. He says, you turn things upside down as if the potter were thought to be like the clay. We can't do that. The potter is not the clay. He is the potter. Shall what is formed say to the one who formed it, you did not make me? We can't say that. God made us and he made everybody else. Amen. Can the pot say to the potter, you know nothing? We can't talk to God like that. God made us, amen. Romans 9 and 20, the apostle Paul writes these words, but you, who are you? But who are you, he writes, a human being to talk back to God. Shall what is formed say to the one who formed it, why did you make me like this? We are the way we are because this is what God wants us to be. And we got to get used to it. It took me some time getting used to being short. Amen. It took me about, I think I was five. Amen. Because I knew I wouldn't get no talk, no talk. We have to get used to who we are and be comfortable in our skin. I'm as comfortable in my skin as you could be. Amen. That's just who I am. I can, I can make jokes about my big head, about my little ears. Amen. I can, I can joke about my, you know, my, my toes. I, I can joke about myself because I know God made me who I am. And I know God has a purpose for me. Amen. When people used to call me, back in the day, me and my brothers, we were athletes. We'd be out running late at night by ourselves, and, and someone pull over and call you by name. Amen. I just keep on running. It wasn't about no fight. I know who I am. You can call me whatever name you want. I know who I am. We have to know who we are. We have to know that we come from the same stuff. Nobody any better than, than we are. Amen. So, again, who are you, a human being, to talk back to God? Shall what is formed say to the one who formed it, why did you make me like this? Be happy with who you are. And the third and final point I'd like to share with you is how are we formed from stuff? How are we formed from stuff? The, the last part of Isaiah 64 and 8D, we say we are all the work of his hand. We are the work of his hand. God spoke some things into existence, but for you and me, he bent down the dirt. Imagine that. God got down the dirt for you. God got down the dirt and created me. Come on. Come on. The all-wise, all-powerful, all-knowing, amen, omnipresent God got down the dirt to create you. Amen. And that alone, <laughs> that alone ought to make a shout. 
Nancy, that alone ought to make you shout. <laughs> Amen. Just because God took time to get, he didn't say, appear. God got down the dirt and created the first man and breathed into him the breath of life. Thank you, God. For breathing into Adam the breath of life, which breathes, breathes all humankind. He, he didn't make some of us. He made all of us. He didn't make some of us. He made all of us. The folks that don't like you, God made them too. The folks you don't like, God made them too. Amen. The good looking folks, God made them. The not so good looking folks, God made them. Amen. The pretty folks, God made them. The rich folks, God made them. The poor folks, God made them. Amen. The wino, God made the wino. What? God made wino. He made the wino. Yes, he did. Well, the wino made the wino with what God gave him. Amen. By drinking too much wine. Amen. Amen. It was a potter's wheel. We've all spent time on the potter's wheel. That metaphor is wonderful. We're on the potter's wheel. And when you're making the pot, if you ever sat back and watched someone on a potter's wheel making a pot, they, they have an, an image in their mind what they want to look like, and they spend time making it look like that. When it doesn't come out, they crunch it back up and start them again. There are some winos that God has crunched back up and put back on the potter's wheel. And they continue to, to fight against God's will. As long as you fight against God's will, you will never turn out to be what God wants you to be. Here, the clay never fights against God, against the potter like that. But God has given you and I free will. He actually lets us fight against his will. What type of God is that? He knew we'd do it. He allowed us free will. And sometimes we fight back. But God is the blueprint. He he had a blueprint for you and me in his mind. He knew what type of vessel he wanted you to be. And sometimes we short circuit that by using our free will. Imagine this, Mary, the mother of Jesus. God had ordained that she would be the mother of Jesus. Now, the only way she could be the mother of Jesus was she had to be a virgin. So Mary could have messed that up. Amen. She could have been messing around with Joseph before they got married. He could have messed that up. But she didn't. She submitted her will to the, the Lord. And she was the Lord's servant. Amen. The potter's will we find in Jeremiah chapter 18. Let me read a few verses of that. Jeremiah 18, beginning verse 1, going about 4. said, this is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house and there, he said, and there I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house and I saw him working at the wheel, but the pot. He was, he was shaping from the clay, was marred in his hands. Look out now. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping as seemed best to him. God's going to make something from you. Yield your life to the Lord and allow God to make what he wants to make out of you. Amen. We, Michelangelo, once they said Michelangelo was walking by, he saw a, a block of marble. He looked at that marble. He stared at it for a while. And Michelangelo Angelo said, there is a, there's an angel inside that marble that just can't wait to get out. He took his, his chisel and his hand and began to make that angel. That's what God has done with you. He, he took a lump of clay. He took some dirt and some water, Deacon Smiley, and he began to make you into who he wanted you to be. God sees what he wants me to be. And sometime I get in God's way. We must yield ourselves to the master. Allow him to create in us a new heart and a new spirit that we might be used by God to do wonderful things in the name of Jesus. Family, we have been called by God to be ambassadors, to go into the highways and byways and tell folks about Jesus. And we're getting in the way of doing what thus saith the Lord because it ain't big enough for us. I want a bigger venue. I used to tell folks, you give me two people in a phone booth, I'm going to preach all day long. We got to find somebody that will listen to us talk about Jesus. There's somebody you got to share your testimony with. Amen. Your testimony ain't a testimony until it has been tested. Go and test your testimony out there telling someone about Jesus and see if they won't cry out, what must I do to be saved? Minister Scott's always talking about let the gospel go viral. You and I got to be involved in the work of making the gospel go viral. Tell someone about Jesus. Yes, it's Black History, but even during Black History Month, 
even on Black History Day, we can tell folks about Jesus. I even talk about your heritage, but in the end of the day, tell them that I'm one of the king's kids and I've been made by God. Thank you, God. Amen. We are God's workmanship. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139, 14, we find these words, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. That's what we find in the biblical writ. In Revelation 7 and 9, we find these words. After this, I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language standing before the throne of the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. I'm here to tell you when we stand before Jesus Christ, hey man, he won't care about your color. He won't care about your status. You won't go to Jesus Christ and say, God, hey Jesus, you know what, what type of car I drove on earth? What type of shoes I had? You, you know what I had in my house and my stuff, my bank account? He don't want to hear nothing. I don't want to hear nothing from the Lord other than these words. <laughs> I don't want to say, good job, daddy, nice hair, good preacher. I want God to say, well done, that good and faithful servant. You've been faithful. That's all I want to hear, well done. Amen. We must live a life worthy of the high calling, recognize that all the other things in life, only what we do for Christ is going to last. All of our righteousness as filthy rags. We must give him glory, honor, and praise in everything we do in the life he has blessed us with. At the end of this age, all believers from all corners of the globe will stand before Jesus Christ. They will represent every nationality, every color of skin. This is the true hope of reconciliation. We were reconciled to God. God acknowledges the, the diversity of his creation while showing his grace to all of us. God wants to recognize, reconcile people to himself. He also wants to reconcile us to one another. The ministry of reconciliation does not stop. It doesn't stop at the forgiveness of our sins. It destroys walls and divides, including race. Racial reconciliation, therefore, is part of full gospel ministry. Racial reconciliation. God cares for black people. God cares for brown people. God cares for yellow people. God cares for, for, yellow, for, 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 for white people and, and orange people and, yellow and green people. He cares for all people of the world. Jesus loves all the little children of the world. Psalm chapter 8, verse 4, we find these words, What is mankind that you are mindful of them? Human beings that you care for them. God cares for me. And God cares for you. He knows who you are. He knows what stuff you were created with. We all come from the same stuff. We all were, were in God's hands. And we should want to stay in God's hands as he continues to mold us. We won't be what God wants us to be until we take our last breath on this side of glory. Hallelujah. We'll wake up in paradise and then we'll be what God wants us to be. Thank you, Jesus. We can't forget, family, that we are clay. We see the work of the potter, an image of his sovereignty over the clay. We see total submission to the will of his hands. We see the spinning clay. It starts to take on the potter's intended shape. However, as it's formed, there is an encounter, the potter encounters a flaw an impurity, a piece of something, soil that gets in the way. Upon finding that impurity, the potter will simply remove it from the clay, add a little more water, and start the process all over. This cycle of kneeling and, 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 and shaping and, and cleaning, it continues until the impurities that affect the forming of the object are removed and the object is then fully shaped into the form that the potter chooses. And I love the metaphor of the potter's sovereignty. But as I said before, <laughs> the point that gets in our way is that he gave us free will. Free will to choose. We can choose to follow God or we can choose to reject him. 
and follow our own way. God has given to humankind the, the opportunity to resist and the shaping of his hands. Many times we try to go our own way and it leads us to destruction. Amen. We are God's children adopted into God's family. I'd like to end with a story that I love to tell. I've told it before, but there's a story of, of scientists and, and scientists, sometimes they, they, they get a little big head of these scientists. They had developed a way to, to create a human being. They could clone a human being. And uh, they decided they're going to talk to God. They told God, God, we don't need your help no more. We got this. And God said, what are you talking about? I said, we can make a, a man so we don't need you anymore. And they said, we'll have a contest, God, to prove that we can make a man just as good as your man. We remember you made Adam, but we can make a man just like that. So he said, okay, let's have the contest. And they got together, and they got the machine all calibrated. They turned all the knobs, they did all this, and got everything ready. And then they, they went over, and God said, you go first. And they got down there and got to get some dirt, got the dirt in a bucket, and came over there to put the machine. And God said, hold on, hold on, wait a minute. They said, what? They said, he said, get your own mud. Get your own mud. God started with mud. He created you and me. He created us to be, be, be his, in his image. And I thank God for who he made me to be. What God has for you, it's for you. And what God has for me, it's for me. I thank God for what he's doing in my life. And I pray what God is doing in your life is going to be to your satisfaction and to God's glory. Amen. I can be happy with what God's done in my life. You got to be happy with what God's doing in your life. Amen. God should be pleased with you and me as long as we are giving him glory, honor, and praise. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, for this word. We pray it will not return void, and you might be glorified and honored by it. Bless these, your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Can we give God a hand? He's worthy. He's worthy. We all come from the same stuff.